So in this video, I designed and printed the perfect personalized nightlight for kids or for adults, because as you all know, I'm a little bit partial to RGB myself. So without further delay, let's dive in. So straight away, I'm going to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by JLCPCB because none of these projects would be possible without them. More on them a little bit later. So I have a nephew and he's only two and I wanted to design a really cool nightlight for him and I wanted it to be personalized. I wanted to give it that personal touch. So I decided to make one and put his name on it, Elliot. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to need the 3D printed parts that I I designed in Tinkercad because I actually started designing this before I started using Fusion 360. So as I've already done it on there, we'll jump on Tinkercad. But Tinkercad is a really good place to start. It's so easy to use. Fusion 360 it might be a bit daunting for some people when you first start out, but I started with Tinkercad and then it wasn't long until I reached the limits of Tinkercad and then I moved over to Fusion 360 and that's where I'm doing all the projects now. It's so much better using Fusion 360 because you have more granular customization, etc. So anyway, I designed it in Tinkercad, we 3D printed the parts, and there's a couple of other bits and bobs we needed, like one of my RGB boards, and then the ESP32 and a USB stick. So first of all, before we look at any of the parts, let's jump on Tinkercad and have a look at how I designed this really cool nightlight. So as you can see, this design is made up of three parts. We have the main sphere, we've got the base, and then of course we've got the name that we're going to be putting on there. Now the base is relatively simple. We have a bar going across the top, which is where the LED board's going to go. We have a hole at the back for the USB cable. And then of course the ESP32 will just sit underneath. Now how I made this sphere, I just basically made a normal sphere with this sphere tool. Uh, and ignore me stretching it here because yeah, you have to actually type in the dimensions properly. But anyway, I made a sphere and then I made a slightly smaller sphere, turned it into a hole and then combined them. So it basically gave me a sphere that was hollow. Then it was a simple case of just slicing a piece off the bottom so the base would actually fit. Then you just print both parts in PLA that's a little bit translucent like the Eason PLA Plus in white. Even though not advertised as translucent, it does let a lot of light out and it looks really cool. So now we have our parts we need to print. Let's go ahead and print them. So as I said at the start of the video, this video is sponsored by the amazing people over at JLCPCB. This video wouldn't be possible without them, so let's quickly talk about them. Now they pride themselves on offering a fast, reliable service at an unbeatable price, and they can even get you PCBs out the door within 24 hours. Now the ordering process is super simple. The way it's laid out on the website, it makes it really intuitive and easy. So let's go ahead now and order some of the boards we'll need for this video. Now it's a simple case of dragging and dropping the Gerber files onto the site and there's a link in the description below so you can download those files and get these PCBs made yourself. Then it's just a case of selecting what colour you want the boards, how many you want, etc, etc. And as you can see, you can get boards for as little as $2. So for more information, check the description below where you'll find a link and just go and take a look around and see how much money you can save. Thanks again to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to actually take a closer look at all the parts that I printed and then of course the ESP32 and that RGB board that was kindly provided by JLCPCB. So first of all, we have the 3D printed base. As you can see, it's a relatively simple shape. Here we have the ESP32 and the LED board. And basically the ESP32 is gonna go under here like so. Now the tolerances were quite tight to get it in there, but 
with a little bit of a push, we got it in there, no problem. And then of course, we'll solder that USB cable and it will come straight out the back. Now the RGB board is just gonna be glued on top just like this so it very much is keep it simple stupid design so let's have a look at the main sphere itself and as you can see it's got Elliot's name on it and it looks really cool I'm actually quite impressed with the finish so I guess it's a good time to tell you what printers I'm using I have the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and I have the A1 with AMS. They're really good printers and I highly recommend them. The A1 Mini is perfect for beginners. You can't go wrong with it. I've never had a bad print out of it. It looks absolutely amazing. So as you can see, the sphere is just gonna go on top of the stand and this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna zoom zoom through this because we don't need to see me wiring up yet another ESP32. If you do want a full guide, click in the top right hand corner and you'll have the full WLED and ESP32 guide. So looking at the final results, as you can see, it looks amazing. I'm really impressed and I'm really glad I decided to make this. Now this was another easy fun project to do and if you guys want me to do a video on Tinkercad on the basics and how I got started with it then let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely get that video put together for you. But anyway my sister said that she's going to be putting this in his playroom because they've just moved into a new house so congratulations on the new house I hope everything's going well and because this house has more bedrooms than the previous one he can actually have two rooms one for play and one for sleeping because we all know how kids get distracted when you put them to bed and all their toys and everything are all there they just want to play with everything so I actually think that's a really good idea and I can't wait to see his face when we get this all set up in his playroom so that's going to be awesome so just to let you guys know the stl files are on the maker world website there's a link in the description below where you can download them for free now it's just the base and the main sort of sphere top because having the personalized name is something that you're gonna have to make yourself but if you don't want a name on there then that's gonna be nice and easy for you just print the sphere print the base and then you can get everything wired up WLED is nice and easy I've got a dedicated video for it if you click up here somewhere you'll be able to follow that tutorial nice and easy now let's talk about the cost because it didn't actually cost that much we're probably looking at about four pound or six dollars in filament the ESP32s are about six dollars and in the UK they're about eight pound the RGB boards you can do things a few different ways there's Gerber files in the description, of course, because I just share everything for free. So you guys can just get these PCBs done yourself from a JLC PCB. And you can have them with or without the LEDs, making it super easy for you. But you can actually get those boards without the LEDs for as little as $2. And it's quite simple to put the LEDs on yourself if you've got a stencil or something like that. Or if you just want the easier out, of course, you can just get them to assemble them for you. There is a minimum buy of five PCBs, but trust me, I've got so many cool projects coming that are gonna use that exact board, just like we did with the headset stand and the control pad stand. They use exactly the same boards as well. So that's two projects with the same board. And I'm telling you, there's gonna be lots more coming in the future using that exact same board. I've got like 30 of them here. I've actually bought them without the LEDs. I've got the stencils because I want to have a go at sort of stenciling it on myself and then using a heat plate or a hot air gun. It's really cool. I'll probably do a video on that as well, sort of showing how I do things there. So I think I've rambled on enough, but if you enjoy my content, you know what to do by now. Like, subscribe, give that bell a little tinkle. I'm JP and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.